We're going to have to rebuild within this wild, wild west of information flow some sort of curating function that people agree to. Uh, you know, I use the analogy in politics. It used to be there were three television stations and Walter Cronkite's on there, and uh, not everybody agreed, and there were always outliers who thought that it was all propaganda and we didn't really land on the moon and uh, Elvis is still alive and so forth. But generally that was in, you know, the, the, the papers that you bought at uh, the supermarket, right, uh, as you were checking out. Um, and, and generally people trusted a, a basic body of information. Um, it wasn't always as democratic as it should have been. And Zoe's exactly right that, for example, on something like climate change, we've actually been doing some interesting initiatives where we're essentially deputizing citizens with handheld technologies to start recording information that then gets pooled. They're becoming scientists without getting the PhD. And we can do that in a lot of other fields as well. But there has to be, I think, some sort of way in which we can uh, sort through information that passes some basic uh, truth, truthiness tests. Uh, and, uh, and, and those that we have to discard uh, because they just don't, don't have any basis in uh, anything that's actually happening in the world. And that's hard to do, uh, but I think it's, it's, it's going to be necessary, it's going to be possible. I, I think uh, the answer is obviously not censorship, but it's, it's creating places where people can say this is reliable. And I'm still able to argue about, uh, safely, about facts uh, and what we should do about it uh, while, while still uh, not just making stuff up.